کچوڑے کسی کو پارک کسی کو پیسوں میں جائے آدھر سی کچھ نمبر دنائے لیڈی بھی بیٹھ لیں آئی ایم بی بری پرویلیس ٹو بی ہیر ٹوڈے فور دی نائنٹ درباری سیٹ موری لیکچر اور آئی ایم بی بری پرس بائی ڈاکٹر پیسوڑی لیٹیشن فرمی تو کام سپیک on a very important matter that to my mind engages the minds of all Indians in terms of the role of business in the development and building of our vital infrastructure on an overall basis of our nation. I think this particular topic has become even more important in the current landscape where there is strife developing between the people at large and business communities on the other hand. There are recent cases where we are all witnessing uh, enlightened interest in the role of businesses in how they exploit the resources that the nation provides for nation building. And I will, during my course of my talk today, touch upon some of these vital issues. But before I do so, I think it's very important for us to recognize that there are really three pillars of a society. And the symbiotic relationship between these three pillars is extremely important. And I believe that there is no better test bed than a country like India, which is diverse in nature, huge population mass, has extreme challenges on one hand and opportunities on the other, and more importantly, is a democracy which puts this symbiotic relationship to a great test. What are these three pillars? The first and foremost is the pillar of legislature, executive and judiciary. We have amongst us today one of the stalwarts from the first pillar, the pillar of administration and legislature. As you know that uh, legislation will form the policies, regulations, laws on the basis of which the other two pillars will work upon and take the nation forward. The administration governing these policies and regulations and judiciary adjudicating in matters which come in some gray areas. The second very important pillar of a society is the civil society itself. The people at large, the communities at large, the NGOs, the media, and many other social organizations that work in the civil space. That, to my mind, forms the bedrock of uh, any nation's development. They are at one level the watchdogs, at another level's electorate, which elects the first pillar of our uh, nation, and more importantly, ensure that everybody is kept on track and provide the necessary checks and balances. The third pillar, which I represent today, is the pillar of business. And the job of business is to provide goods and services, and more importantly, the fuel for the nation to move forward. But all these three pillars need to have a very coherent, very clear, very transparent relationship, without which the nation cannot move forward. And while business is an important pillar, it can only be that much powerful and important as the first two pillars will want it to be. Digviji Ji mentioned about my own early struggles and my own early successes. I very fondly remember as a young entrepreneur when I was cutting my teeth in telecommunications, and he's so very right, the might that we had to face of very, very large corporations and the public sector incumbent BSNL itself was no easy task. As a member of that first vital pillar, he showed us the light. When we broke India's monopoly for the first time by launching fixed line services in Madhya Pradesh and Bhopal, I fondly remember how much time and resources Shri Dibhiji provided as the Chief Minister. We launched in Bhopal, followed that. Uh, we've launched it in Indore, followed it in Bhopal, then went to Gwalior, Jabalpur, and Raipur. And in all these five places, a very busy chief minister 
with all his administration, were always there for the launch of these services. Because he saw in those five critical launches the start of a telecom revolution. So I cannot, therefore, thank you enough, uh, Digvijiji, for having given us at a very early stage, not many chief ministers would have given the time of their life, to go and spend time, five vital days in a matter of few months, to start launching what today is a revolution in this country. And I'm going back 10, 12 years when telecom was not the most fashionable business to be in. So therefore, this symbiotic relationship between the administrators, the policy makers, and business is extremely important for all the pillars of the society to move forward. The net result, of course, of that was the benefit that it provided into the uh, society at large by offering them telecom services, not only at affordable services, but more importantly, on demand, which was a dream of many of our earlier leaders in the country who wanted telecom for the masses. But I will come uh, to telecom uh, in a moment. So these three pillars, to my mind, uh, need to come very, very close to each other to provide the necessary moment for any nation. It is generally said that the capitalist societies have honed this particular relationship very well. Having said that, we are in the last 24 months seeing massive uh, problems in this particular relationship, even in the most advanced countries. Today, the entire financial world in the U.S., many parts of Western Europe, are facing the wrath of the political masters. Certainly from a very important pillar in their societies, parts of businesses in very de developed Western worlds have become the villains of the peace. They are today being held responsible for having created massive meltdowns in many, many parts of the world, to a point where if you go back just 15 to 18 months, it appeared that the world may go into a crisis that was only witnessed back in 1929. We were that close to a disaster. And even now, there are people who predict that there may be a double dip in the Western world, and therefore, we are not out of the woods in as far as role of the business or parts of businesses is concerned. Do businesses build nations? The answer is an emphatic yes. There is no question in my mind that businesses build nations, both within the businesses that they do and beyond the businesses that they are engaged in. Go back to post-independence, when the country was trying to put itself together after a very, uh, very uh, tragic uh, partition that we had. There were early entrepreneurs, and we have today amongst ourselves uh, Mujal Saab here, Brijmur Mujal Ji, who started a small, tiny enterprise. I mean, it was not even an enterprise of bicycles. And today he represents the largest bicycle manufacturer, automobile manufacturers of this country. The amount of employment, the amount of taxes, excise duties, octroi, sales tax, that one enterprise created for the benefit of state of Punjab, district of Ludhiana, and the entire country cannot be uh, thanked enough. So did he play a vital role in uh, contributing towards the nation building? The answer is for all of us. I, as a school child and later on early college days, rode on one of his bicycles. Unlike some of the other countries who did not build their enterprises or manufacturing capabilities or entrepreneurs, India had not to suffer on account of its own production capabilities in these areas. And mind you, there are many, many countries in the world, even today, 50 years, 60 years, 62 years after India's independence, which still rely solely on import of equipment. Pakistan is a classic example. Very little is produced in, this, in that country even today. Many parts of Africa that I see today are reliant upon imports of even basic manufactured goods. India, therefore, has done well in creating a climate and where businesses could prosper, create employment, generate a lot of activity and momentum in the business, and contribute fuel in the form of excise and taxes. There are some remarkable businesses which in itself, to my mind, as a business of the nation. In particular, what comes to my mind is infrastructure projects. Today, building of roads, ports, 
airports, and all sorts of logistics and transports serve a very vital need of taking this country forward. Billions of dollars are being poured into the infrastructure sector. Millions of jobs are being created. And very large amount of taxes in turn are generated from